What up, y'all? My name is Jade Fox. This is the Major Looks channel, and today, an expose. No, um, I'm actually not gonna be dragging. What? Here on the Major Looks channel, dragging someone, can't really ever really fully rule it out. Yesterday, I came across this article um, on Vogue.com written by Christian Alar, titled, Finally, Sexy Clothes for Men. I am now paying Vogue their subscription fee just because I really wanted to read this full article because I wanted to know what um, young Christian had to say about menswear. I have some feelings, I have some opinions. Y'all already know, um, ungendering fashion, ungendering style is like something that we talk about a lot on this channel. I just wanna talk about this article. I wanna talk about some of the things that uh, Christian mentioned in this article as well. Some brands that I'm going to recommend uh, to you who are falling now into the category what is now being called the sultry man. So if you are now the sultry man uh, and you wanna get into this conversation or you're just interested, stay tuned. As I mentioned before, clothing does not have a gender. They're just clothes. You can wear whatever you want. Um, you don't have to wait for Vogue to tell you what is okay to wear versus what is not okay to wear. You can wear whatever you want at any time, at any weight, at any age, at any any point in your life. You can wear whatever you want, as long as it's not like harmful to people. I have this one jacket and it has titties all over it and my girlfriend told me one time when we were walking in a Joanne fabric, she was like, maybe you shouldn't wear that jacket with the titties all over it with all these kids in here and this Joanne fabrics. But I said, nay. I wanna wear, I mean, they sucked on them for like a year, you know what I mean, when they got out. So like, my opinions on menswear are pretty much the same as the opinions of this writer. Um, when we think of menswear, we think of like conservative, stuffy, or just on the other side of it, which is like kind of boring. I wouldn't say that anyone has ever described menswear as sexy. I think what people describe sexy about menswear is probably the person wearing it. Or oftentimes, like I've seen a suit, like a nice sharp suit, some might call that sexy. But the margin for what is sexy for menswear is pretty small, um, which is funny because the bar is so low <laughs> for like four men, for cis men. Uh, it's not difficult for cis men to look good by society standards. It's not difficult for cis men to be stylish by society standards. All a man has to do is switch out um, a regular baseball hat for a bucket hat and boom, fashion. And the thing is, this is this is barely even my opinion. This is just kind of what, you know, this is the landscape that we're used to dealing with when it comes to menswear aesthetics and just the attitude towards menswear. It's very, even keeled. I think that the biggest thing when it comes to like sexy menswear or like the sultry, the sultry man aesthetic, I just feel like it's very centered around physique, which is pretty true to all menswear. I feel like the main distinction between like menswear and women's wear is women's wear is uh, crafted to enhance curves or to minimize belly fat. You know, everything is crafted so that your body is by what society would label as attractive. Um, and when it comes to menswear, I feel like menswear is less catered to a man's body and more so catered to the occasion or, you know, the aesthetic itself. So it's almost like menswear in itself, all fashion centers the cis, white, physically fit man, which is why when we look at unisex clothing, it's all men's and still caters to that um, white, cis, physically fit man. Fashion very, 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 very rarely will center a queer body, will very rarely center um, a curvy body. And we've seen the ways that we've almost like been allowed to participate in fashion if you have a queer body or like a curvy body and it's still by white supremacist terms. Because you know, And I keep bringing up white supremacy because <laughs> I mean, it's relevant, no? But I keep bringing it up because um, at the center of everything is white supremacy. And so the default body that we um, associate with masculine looks or even with unisex looks or genderless looks will always default to the white male cis body. Um, and so I'm mentioning that to say that, you know, when we are going on this conversation and talking about what is sexy in menswear, the window is a little bit smaller than I think we think it is. However, that doesn't mean that I 
think that we're going down a bad path. Like I think that the fact that this article is out, the fact that it's on Vogue, the fact that these brands I'm going to be mentioning later on in this ad or later on in this video, girl, I wish it was an ad. I would love some money. A lot of them are paving ways in the menswear realm um, and making more room for more ungendered clothing and just, you know, more revealing or even feminine characterized clothing. For that, I'm excited. This is not something that's new. I understand that this is something that feels new because of the like wildly open homophobia, misogyny that we see on an everyday basis. And so when a big platform like Vogue comes out and saying they're like, yo, crop tops are cool now, it does feel um, like a mark of some type of like revolution, right? Or a mark of some type of new chapter chapter that's beginning. But I gotta give credit where credit is due. I gotta give credit to Prince. I gotta give credit to um, Mick Jagger. I gotta give credit to Elton John. I think that the thing about masculinity that a lot of people miss is your masculinity is your masculinity. Freddie Mercury, like all these people, I think that their masculinity and the way that they carry their own unique masculinity is what really helped them pull these looks off. So regardless of the masculinity that you believe is appropriate or not, their version of it was true to them and authentic and it worked. Especially with Lil Nas X, Harry Styles, and I'm failing to think of someone else, but someone on the other side of the spectrum, Christine and the Queens, I think that's what the band's name is. Like except that you can be sexy in a three-piece suit as a man. You can also be sexy in a cat suit as a man. It's just how you do it. These let's get into some like general observations when it comes to like what sexy menswear is. And to be honest, there's not like a lot of difference between this sultry menswear and sultry women's wear. It's revealing, it's body hugging, lace, um leather cutouts leans definitely more into like that lingerie or even like more kinky style of clothing. A way that I have been seeing people kind of like work, not necessarily work around it, but ways that I've seen men style clothing in feminine ways that have nothing to do with how revealing things are is literally just by adopting women's accessories. I would say that that's like the entry level to this kind of like sultry men's aesthetic where that be like long gloves, like having like the super long gloves or um, maybe like a pearl earring or just some type of like dangly earring, jewels, anything that's sheer or mesh. Like there are just certain like aspects of women's wear that are very feminine and like flirty. And I think that you can adopt those things without having to redo your entire closet. With some of the brands that I've seen kind of take on the sultry men's wear aesthetic, there's a lot of tank tops. It's a very body, very body hugging and like an emphasis on the torso. And there's like an emphasis on the chest. I feel like we're not at the point where we're really, really pushing the boundary. But if we're talking entry level, if we're talking about getting our toes wet, you're gonna see a lot of that. I guess this is more so, you know, a comment on the topic itself and less about the article. There's something that is kind of annoying to me about this conversation and I couldn't quite figure out what it was exactly until this morning. This just feels like another, another way we can just like amplify white men who are ripped. Like I'm not gonna call a white dude who's ripped in a crop top revolutionary. I'm not gonna call any dude in a crop top revolutionary. What I will call revolutionary is whether or not that man has a crop top or not. Are you actively working to dismantle white supremacist ideology and misogyny around in your family and friends? That's what I'm into. Any straight white able-bodied ripped person who is going to be kind of dipping their toes into this queer aesthetic or into this sultry man gender bending kind of you know realm any man who's going to step foot into any person who's going to step foot into that i would hope that you would do the work so so that the lives of the other people who live this life have a better time it's not just about protecting your own self-expression it's also about protecting the self-expression and identity of everyone there were a couple brands mentioned in this article that i checked out and that i would also recommend and so i'm going to be listing them off and showing some photos and that and that's of such wish such which and 
Kieran's fourth. Uh, the first one is the French be fucking me up with the double R's. Okay. Utere. 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 There is also Kingsley, which was mentioned in the article. Fang. And I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, recommend Dion Lee. I'm also very much a fan of like back in the early 2000s where men were doing like the baby tees. The baby tees? I'm gonna have to recommend Moa Lola for that one. Little pricey, however, black owned, black woman owned, I believe. And I don't need to explain myself any further. Also, this goes for everybody. Please, 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 please shop local. I'm telling you the coolest stuff that I own came from some random person I found on Instagram. There are so many independent brands, so many independent designers that have like 5,000 followers, 500 followers, and they're making really, really amazing, like well-crafted items. And so that's why I say, please shop local, please shop um, independent if you can, shop black, shop minority owned, because these are the people that truly need the support, but also are creating really dope stuff. I have to mention shopping local, uh, right now, especially because of the pandemic, a lot of these brands and a lot of these companies had to apply for the Payback Protection Program, which was kind of like a recovery program for a lot of small business owners um, during the pandemic, which is ha still happening, by the way. And what these loans did was to literally just help them stay open. So, but it's really up to us to support local, support women owned, support small businesses, um, to truly keep the vision going because otherwise we're going to, we're going to keep getting, I know y'all are tired of shopping at ASOS. There are initiatives like the Build Back Better plan that helps small businesses fully recover. But as we all know, government is very, very, very funny with money. And so if you've got it and you're gonna spend it anyway, at least spend it somewhere uh, that's truly gonna like help the community. All right, y'all, that is my video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you thought. I will link the article down in the description, um, but just know you do have to pay uh, if this is not your first time going on Vogue.com. Where would you want? Wear what you like and wear it out, you sexy bitch. You sexy man. Bye. <laughs>